Vlogging. Here we go with a vlog. Only this time I have decided to uh, go ahead and add some instructions because this is a little bit different than what I've done in the past. Um, this is a little bit more of a DIY. I'm just kind of um, flipping through my little book here and this is one of the Halloween decorations that I was working on. I have this thing every year where I always end up looking at like Michael's and Joann's and those Halloween superstores and whatnot and it ends up being that I look at stuff and I'm like you know that looks kind of cool and then I realize that like it looks okay but it's either too clean or too hokey um, and so I just kind of wanted to make some of my own stuff because I, I used to actually do this pretty regularly, make props uh, for things, whether it was for plays or um, I did some Halloween work when I was in college, did some stuff for some haunts and also for our cross lounge competitions. And there was a door competition as well for um, when I was in school. Anyway, so I've, I've made a lot of uh, a lot of props, specifically books though I've done a lot of um, I also do custom like journal covers and so this is kind of in that same realm you know kind of aging the book and this is just a little sketchbook that I already had um, and I had a few drawings on it but not many I actually have another one of these and um, I pulled out a few signatures uh, just in case just to give myself a little bit more space to work with in case I ended up with some thickness this is actually going to end up being a two-part video because I did the book and in, in the next video the book gets pretty much finished. But I also did a few other things and they didn't take nearly as long as the book did. So those will be, those will be in the other video. Um, so yeah. I thought I had figured out my video problem and it turns out that I did figure it out. It was the D drive. It was actually the connection to the D drive. And I think I got it worked out finally. It's still disconnecting sometimes. I'm using a different cord now. But I've managed to figure a way to keep it from stopping that. I don't know. We'll figure. We'll see. We'll see. Hopefully it works now and I'm not having any more problems. I actually didn't have any problems once I converted this. Um, with uh, the editing so I'm very happy about that because normally I have all kinds of problems and I like lose a halfway through or the files corrupted or I just I just have bad luck I feel like uh, and, I, and I've you know I've been doing this for a long time so I, I know I'm not doing anything wrong I'm just having problems so a little update about what's been going on uh, we just got back from Colossal Con and it was fun Colossal Con East is much smaller than uh, the, than um, regular Colossal Con, a Colossal Con Prime, which is in Ohio. But um, it's slowly growing. It's, this is our second year, and it'll probably get, get a little better uh, as time goes. It'll probably, you know, pick up a couple thousand next year, and eventually it'll get to the point where we max out, max out that Kalahari. And uh, I think we're going to be doing one in Texas as well. There was a little bit of a snafu on Saturday. My sister uh, went with us and she ended up having a bad, um, what's called a cervical strain, which is a muscle in your neck. Um, and it either had a really bad strain or a tear. Uh, and we ended up taking her to the hospital because her arm went numb and it started hurting really bad. Um, they uh, worked her arm a little bit and then they gave her a cortisone shot and it's doing much better now. So that's good. Um, but that was just like a very like stressful thing to do. I have to go to a hospital in another state and kind of deal with all that, especially in the middle of what was both of our work shifts at the convention. So other than that, things went pretty smooth. I didn't, we didn't get a chance to go to the water park or do any of the fun stuff, um, for the convention. I did buy some stickers. So I, you know, I try to, um, Whenever I'm at a convention and I go to like the artist's alley, I love looking for artists who don't do fan art. Um, and I know like fan art is a lot of people's bread and butter. So like I, I totally get it. But I really like to support artists that are making their own IP 
And I really appreciate, especially because I know it's hard, I really appreciate at conventions seeing that, seeing people there that have their own artwork um, for sale. And so I try to, I really try to um, be a patron in that way of, of people that aren't just, you know, drawing Marvel characters or anime characters that they know, but they're doing their own stuff. So, and uh, <laughs> on this video, I mentioned that this is the first time I'm actually using craft foam to craft. The only other thing I've really ever used craft foam for is to make little stamps. So this will be the first time like ever in my whole life that I've actually used craft foam to craft something. And under normal circumstances, if I was making a book like this and I was crafting it, for example, if I was making it for someone else, I would probably use real leather or an approximation or even metal or something like that or polymer clay, depending on how I wanted it to bend. Um, but in this case, I felt like since this is going to be mine, I'm not selling it, um, I'd go ahead and use the foam. Plus, I didn't mind if it got dinged up a little bit. But it, I think it actually worked really well for what the final product ended up being. And uh, books, I just, I'm obsessed with books, like the shape of books and the feel of books and working in books, you know, art-wise. Um, which is one reason I have way too many. I have so many empty journals and stuff. I even have another book that I started working on for this. Um, I'm trying to make sure that I don't make them all too 3D on the front because I want some of them to actually be open and have things in them. And I know this is early for Halloween, but I intend to make a lot of things and do a lot of um, tutorials like this, I guess. Uh, kind, of, kind of what I'm going for here is to show people that they can make make stuff that's fun now of course in this situation I did use if you look at the little skull that I made I did make that last year and it's something that I happen to already have but certainly if you don't make stuff from polymer clay and you wanted to make something like this you could um, print out something and you could do it like decoupage like a picture you could draw something you know on on there because I did I did end up I think gessoing the entire book you could totally draw something on there or do something or you could even leave it as it is and not you know just do the kind of like make the book look old like I did um and not even you know do a skull necessarily you could write something on there like you know uh, you know book of shadows or witch's brew or whatever I'm not super keen on appropriating like um Wiccan or witch stuff for my Halloween stuff I try to just make it more spooky but I know a lot of people do like you know uh witch type things um but because for me it is actually a religion, I don't like to mess around with it too much. Although I probably will end up using a couple of Book of Shadows templates for some pages that I'm going to be doing just to make them more decorative. And then I'm just going to take out like the references to like spellcraft, if that makes any sense. Um, I don't know. It's kind of here. It's kind of weird because like, I mean, I, I used to, I guess, kind of study Wicca but not really practice um when I was younger and I was kind of talking to my mom about it and like trying to like talk to her about like different kind of alternative you know religions and belief systems because she she was like kind of a joiner and I just I don't know it, it's a long story but basically she's still into it and I'm not but I don't have an issue with it and I think it's I think it's actually a pretty interesting you know practice and I and I I do uh I value the people that, that really do like try to follow, especially specifically Wicca, not all witchcraft is Wicca, obviously. Um, but uh, here I'm adding some paint to the book. And this book, one of the things I always do uh, when I paint things black is I like to add another color to deepen the color. Because what happens is when you just paint something black, it gets really, really flat, especially if it's black gesso. And so from far away and even though and I did end up adding more gesso later from far away this will never look red it'll just look like it like it has a little bit of depth to it and so I put this um it's Alerzine Crimson I said it was red in my little subtitle but it's actually Alerzine Crimson that I used and I just watered it down a bit um and went over the whole thing and so it I, I like how it has a little bit of a sheen to it just a little bit of a different color um, and for me, that's really important, especially if I'm going to have a whole bunch of things that end up being black. I don't want them to all look the same so they can have a little bit, um, just a little bit more depth that way. And, and that's a good thing to keep in mind for any kind of painting you're doing. Anytime you use black, 
it's sometimes um, very helpful to add a little bit of color to it, whether it's blue or green or red, um, just to deepen it slightly, just to, you know, just to uh, change the hue ever so slightly, um, because it really will give it more character. Uh, and it will it'll give it more depth and so in, especially in this case because I'm using something that uh, is already textured it'll it'll help quite a bit and you can't really even tell that I put red on it at this point like it's dry it just it just looks black with maybe a sheen um, and yeah I use the all to make little indentations in the foam like I said I'm not used to using foam um, for anything other than making stamps so and uh, I got this, this the Jacquard uh, micas in this particular case. I got these micas that I have a ton of that I bought. Um, it's funny because I had already been buying micas from TKB Trading and I really liked them. And I kept thinking, oh, well, I'll get these Jacquard ones because, you know, these will be great and I can use them for everything. But the reality is, is they're actually kind of grainy and they're not, they're not bad, but they're a little bit harder to use than than the TKB ones that I'm used to using because those also have some things mixed into them to help them be better for cosmetics. And they're ground a little finer. So while I love the way that the color looks on the Jacquard ones, um, the colors are great. They're, you know, pretty inexpensive for what you get. I actually, st I, I do prefer the TKB ones and I need to order some more of those. Especially the duochromes, because the DKB duochromes and the ones that like have interference colors are 10 times better than the Jacquard ones. Um, so I have this uh, Cheap Joe's, this um, shellac that I'm using. It's like a, I bought it on a whim and I'm not super fond of it for anything but this, but it works great for this. I like to put it on top of stuff that I want to add mica to because it sticks, it makes it sticky. And that's pretty much all I use it for. Even the matte one is kind of sticky. So, you know, I'm going to make a big mess now. And I think at some point during while I was filming this, I think I actually ended up sticking my entire fingernail in that mica. <laughs> and it made a huge mess. And um, you'll notice that there are quite a bit of cuts in this. I did a good amount of editing because I'm pretty sure I worked on this for at least three hours in total. Um, I think I cut this this section of video down from over three hours. So, and of course that's including my breaks and stuff because this was all this was all live and talking to people at the same time and whatnot. But I will say that I I did end up messing up and it'll show you, you'll see it at the end um, when I started like poking holes in it. Not during this part, but a, a different part. I poked some holes in it and I ended up cracking the plate part of it a little bit and I don't really mind because this is supposed to look like old and worn but it did bother me at the time that like I think I ended up cracking like three of the areas and it's only because I used that cheaper um, polymer clay uh, under normal circumstances I would use my Fimo or my Sculpey but this was actually the stuff from Michaels that's like you know way way cheaper and I like to use that for book covers and when I originally made this piece it was just for me to kind of, I go, I don't know, test, and I ended up holding on to it. Um, I had made it to cover a different book, uh, and I didn't end up using it. So, and I lost a couple of corner pieces. I don't know where they went. So, I think I ended up, I just ended up using this piece here. Um, the micas that I use do have to be kind of uh, covered once they're down. You got to coat them with something, or else it kind of rubs off. And so, I went ahead and used matte medium for that. I prefer to spray it, but I don't, I just don't like dealing with taking things outside and spraying them. Matte medium works fine. And of course I did some dry brushing and here you'll see that because I was zoomed in, I didn't realize uh, half the time because I was talking to people that you could, couldn't really see what I was doing a whole lot. And so I kept taking the piece off the frame and I didn't mean to do that, but basically just dry brushing it over and over again. Later on um, in the second video, you'll see I actually went back and added some silver accents to everything that I worked on. And so once I get the book back out, I did end up doing the same thing with the book. And I think at this point I'm adding a little bit of green paint. I think I, I mixed some green um, 
green, maybe green ink in with a little bit of the gesso to kind of add it and make it little, look a little more aged. And I kept changing my mind about the placement on this. And I, I was like, do I want it to be in the middle? But once, once I added the color onto those little the straps that kind of go across the book, I decided that um, it was too much in the middle. And so I, I moved it to the side. I'm, I have a lot of like weird things about balance. And you'll even notice um, at the bottom of the front of the book, the strap is slightly um, what we would call weighted, like in framing, we would call weighting the bottom. So there's like a little bit more space on the bottom than the top, which is something that most people wouldn't notice. But if the book is sitting up and you're looking at it like head on, or if it's just a little bit above your vision, it'll make it look more even. Um, so I do a lot of things like that. Plus it makes it look a little bit more handmade. I don't know if that makes sense, if it's too perfect. I don't like things that are too perfect um, when it comes to stuff like this, especially if it's supposed to look, you know, old and gross and and whatever and whatnot. So <sighs> there has been so much going on still. Um, I know I mentioned a little bit of it before, but we may have found a home for the cats. And so this is back into like, human stuff. We may have found a home for the cats, which I'm very happy about. Um, I'm supposed to be getting a text from the lady tonight. It's actually one of my sister's teachers that I may be getting a text from. So that's good. Um, my mom has told me that she's actually cleaned a little bit and made it uh, into her kitchen a little bit cleaning. So I'm happy about that. Uh, my sister wants to go and visit the cats. Um, and I'm really worried about taking her over there because I'm, I'm afraid what's going to happen is, is my sister and I are going to have to both wear masks when we go in the house and it's going to make my mom mad and like cause drama. And honestly, I just don't, I don't have it in me right now to like deal with her being upset. Um, she's not mad at me right now or anything. So that's good. She's not yelling at me about anything. Um, I agreed to help her with some bills and stuff until we can get um, kind of the paperwork and stuff worked out for me taking care of my sister. So that's, I guess that's not, it's neither here nor there, but I have, um, I have all these projects that I want to do. Um, my, my brother's wife actually asked me to work on a project where I make a little, um, like one of those cutouts where, you know, you can put your head through it and there's like art on the front of it and you take a picture of it for her son's birthday and I can do that. I was thinking that um, since I don't have very much practice with my spray paints, that I might do some, do that with my spray paints and try to make the art that way. Um, not only will it save me time, but I already have a bunch of those spray paints and I have the caps and I need practice. So I may get some video of that. I haven't decided yet, um, but that'll be the next thing that I work on. Hopefully when the weather like gets a little bit better, I think she was saying his birthday is, is a ways away. So it's, it's like in... I can't remember if she said it was October or I'm not sure, but it, it should only be like a one day thing for me to make it. Um, I don't know if I need a jigsaw or if I'm going to make it out of cardboard yet. She said she would like it in wood, but I don't, it, it might just be better to make it out of cardboard because I don't think she, it's not the kind of thing that I feel like you would use multiple years, depending on like how old your kid is. And here's where you can see where I stuck my finger in there and made a big old mess. Anyway, so I'm, I mean, you can see what I'm doing. It's the same thing that I did with the, the polymer clay piece, uh, essentially just using all the same stuff. And I do really, like I said, I really love that that duotone, especially when I use it with copper because it makes the copper look aged, but it still looks metallic. Um, and I really, I really like the way that that looks. And I'm sorry I'm jumping all over the place. I mean, I'm not really sorry because you know me by now. You know that you're going to get a little information about the art and you're going to get a lot of information about my life, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Um a while back I started having really bad chest pain. It was last it was last year and I my um endocrinologist actually decided to put me on a nebulizer because she thinks what's happening is is that I'm having asthma attacks and instead of like not being able to breathe it's just locking my chest up. And I noticed that anytime I get stressed out it's been happening a lot more frequently um and the pain is it's almost unbearable. Like it's to the point where like, I'm not crying or anything like that, but I, I like have a hard time functioning because it literally feels like my chest is caving in. It hurts so bad. And the thing is the nebulizer is really hard to use. Like you have to make sure that all of the pieces are sanitized, like washed and then sanitized and then dried and then kept in a like sanitary place. 
So you have to like clean them and then you have to clean them like even if they've been sitting like even in a bag, you have to clean them again before you use them. So by the time I can actually clean it to use it, it, it it's like my pain is, you know, it's already like an hour into it. Um, and so I just kind of wait it out, but it, it's something that has been affecting me a lot more lately with all this extra stress going on. And I don't know, I don't know how to explain to somebody that is so used to like having a whirlwind of problems and drama around them that their drama is like making me ill. Um, and so the only thing that I've been able to do is kind of uh, disengage completely and just like kind of almost ignore the things that like I'm being told and then just let like, I mean that's really the only thing I can do and of course I mean I'm talking about my mom but when she messages me it's like these big long threads of either her being really sad or upset or it's her like mad about something else that I got nothing to do with or you know or she's just like straight up attacking me or my sister or my brother and um, as soon as I get the text message, my chest just crunches and I'm used to like panic attacks and I'm used to anxiety attacks and, and all of that. But now it's turned into this and I'm at the point now where I feel like a jerk, but I've kind of just started ignoring her <laughs> and I don't really know. Um, and it's not like I don't listen to what she says. I will eventually go back and look at it. But usually when I answer her, it's just you know, hey, if you need something, let me know this, but I'm not going to read this right now, or I can't do this right now, or I'm laying down, or, you know, it, we're out of town, or, or whatever, and I'm not trying to, like, blow her off and be a jerk, but at the same time, I'm definitely not engaging, because I just can't, because I just, I want to be able to function, and I want to be able to, you know, go to work, and be able to work, and not, and the thing is, like, Anxiety is such a weird thing and it's such a weird disorder that like when I when I'm worked up and upset, I'm not even upset about what she said most of the time. Like it's not even what she said, it's the fact that she just blew up again. That is what gets me uh upset and it's so strange because at this point in my life you would think I would be used to it, you know. <laughs> like I'm at if you know 39 years of of this constant constant drama but I had been disengaged from it for so long that my body can't take it anymore like I just don't have the I don't know coping mechanism to to just keep keep it up like that like she does and my sister is she's gotten to that point too where she can't take it my mom you know she can't get to me she gets to her and she's been bothering her all weekend about stuff she wants to give her and visiting her and stuff like that so we're going to be uh probably going to see her pretty soon and, and this is where I decided right here on the piece that I I didn't didn't really want it in the middle I think I was like you know what I think I'm just going to move it I don't think I want it there um and I think I ended up doing like a second coat yeah of uh of matte gel and anyway sorry I'll come back to it so <sighs> anyway, I, I just, I feel like a jerk, but like, I've literally not listened to the messages she sent. I've not, uh, I've looked at the text and like answer them, but not really engaged. And I don't want to be a jerk and like be that person that doesn't engage. But at the same time, the stuff that she's talking to me about is not relevant to anything that's going on. So I feel a little bit justified. Distress, distress, sorry. <clears throat> distress ink I feel a little justified in being like that because it is it really is just me like trying to take care of myself and my sister like because if I get upset my sister's going to know about it too because I'm going to be like not able to function and then she's going to feel bad because you know she kind of I, puts a lot of this on her herself sometimes and I can like I know she doesn't say it out loud but like I can see it that you know she feels like you know, she thanks me for being here and stuff. And I'm like, you know, it's, it's fine. Like I, I, I like having her here. So I don't know. I'm rambling again. It's happening. So I'm, uh, rubbing stuff all over the place, you know, with my fingers. You know, it's something interesting about distress ink is that I've noticed that you can like, it'll come off of paper and you know, it, 
kind of rubs off. It's like water soluble. And it also does that thing where the oxides, this is the distress oxide, it oxidizes a little bit. Uh, but once it's on my fingers, it's really hard to get it off your fingers. Like it's super easy to get it off the book. It's super hard to get off my fingers, even though it's totally water soluble. I don't know. But I'm starting to get to that point at the book in the book now where I'm like trying to decide if I'm overworking it or not with the stuff. And I, I add more colors and I take it away and I add more color and I take it away. But I'm also starting to like it at this point. And I have this thing where I don't like my artwork most of the time until I get about three quarters of the way through. Like I usually know it's going to work out and it's going to be OK. But in this case, I wasn't sure um, where I was going to go. I just knew that I wanted to use that little skull thing. That's all I knew. And I knew that I wanted to use that book, of course. Um, and I have other books, too. And I don't know if I got video of the other book, so I may I may just end up um, showing a picture of it later. But when I did the stream, I believe it was in total an eight-hour stream, maybe? Maybe not that long. I know it was most of the day. And uh, the book was the first thing that I worked on. And the second thing that I worked on was... A candle holder, I believe. And then the last thing that I worked on was um, a custom frame. I took a plastic frame and I put some art in it and made like, you know, a, a creepy, creepy flame, a creepy like old Victorian picture frame. Um, and so in this, in the second part of the video, you'll see that um, and you'll see the fin me finish this book. So the other stuff that I did didn't take nearly as long as the book did. Although I will say the picture frame part of it took quite a while just because I had to fight a little bit with it because of the way that those frames are made and the fact that it's plastic and just dealing with plastic and trying to coat it and make things stick to it is a little bit harder than, you know, like a, a book like this where the outside of it can be sanded down and worked on, which is I still what I did with the frame, but in a different way. Um, and I, and at this point, I'm pretty much ready to um, figure out how I want to attach the skull. And, and I, I think I put a little text thing up here that says that this is where I started making bad decisions because um, I did decide to go ahead and sew it down to the to the front. But instead of sewing it down, um, you'll see that I dug through all of my my different threads. Um, oh, there's like a mess up there. I'll fix it anyway. Uh, this is my favorite tool to use, this little, yeah, I got two of these, but I, I have Black Star ink in them. And this one is actually watered down slightly, and I believe it's the matte finish one, because there's there's um, the high carb Black Star, and then there's the matte Black Star. And I think the matte finish one is what's in this brush. And I've got a tiny bit of water in there, and I love um, using it for stuff like this, especially because it's not water soluble once it dries. So when it's down, it's down. And I did go ahead and, you know, get it wet in a few places and kind of smush it around. Um, but it really helps define and age, you know, some of the things. And I went back over, you know, some of the areas to make them look more either, either more like metal or more like there are bins and, and, and pieces there. Um, from, you know, like across the room, you can't tell that's not metal at all which I don't think anybody will be flipping through it but if they do they'll see like four crappy drawings <laughs> oh anyway so yeah it's so like I was talking about the bad decisions here and essentially the worst bad decision I made was not being super careful when I was um poking holes uh through things because I think you'll see me crack it um and I'm looking for stuff. I'm like, am I going to do a thread? And I did actually originally want to do thread, but the needle wouldn't fit through there because I have these um, these book binding needles and they just don't fit through. And that's because I was worried about cracking it and I did end up cracking it anyway, but whatever, it's fine. Like I actually really like the way that it turned out. So it doesn't bother me that much, but like right about here is where I cracked it. Uh, not quite, not quite yet. No, nope, maybe there. Right here. That's where I cracked it. And I didn't even notice until I started to put it down. And it's even possible that somebody in my chat noticed it before I did. But, you know, hey, that's life. I'm not perfect at these things. I am i won't say that I'm bad at these things because I am actually pretty good at these kind of things. But everything that I do is, um, and is, and is an experiment. You know, I'm always using different materials. If I made everything the same all the time and perfect... I mean, that'd be great. And like I said, I'm, I didn't make this for anybody else. It's just for me. So 
it's just a decoration, a decorate. But I, I do like the way it turned out, and we're getting close to the point where uh, the video will be over. Um, thank you for putting up with my rambling again, and I hope you enjoyed this. If you want any more information about the things that I used, I think that it was, I made it everything pretty obvious and pretty easy to follow. Um, just let me know uh, in the comments, and I will, uh, I'll let you know anything you want to know. You know, these are actually pretty good little books. I think I got these on Amazon for like five bucks and the paper is pretty good. I've been using um, one of my fountain pens in it to uh, to draw with this ink, this Lexington Gray ink from Noodlers that I just absolutely love because it reminds me of graphite without the sheen. And it's really it's really nice for drawing. Um, and I wanted to do like a whole book with just that. So. This is the end of the video, and I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening. And part two should be up hopefully maybe tomorrow or the day after. I just got to do some more editing. Thank you. Bye bye, 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 bye. Goodbye.